Blame Truth here, and after my last video, I, I kind of had an epiphany with this franchise. And what I mean by that is, uh, it, it's like I, I opened Pandora's box, or I've been watching a lot of Hellraiser recently, so maybe Pinhead's, you know, uh, limit configuration. I don't know, but uh, I opened the box, I came, as Pinhead once said, I think, and uh, I don't know. Figuring out like what they don't want us to know has been really, really eye-opening because it just backs up everything I have been saying for the past five years now. And when I first started saying this stuff five years ago, I had a lot more people disagreeing with me, a lot more just uh, people... You know, saying like, quit complaining, it's not that bad. That, that's the main, <laughs> that's the main argument is, quit complaining, it's not that bad. You know what else isn't that bad? Chinese water torture, at least at the start. After a few hours though, yeah, it gets that bad. And, and we're kind of at the stage where we are, we are at max capacity for our, our tolerance for this Chinese water torture that is Call of Duty. The only big news, Lately with Call of Duty is Warzone Mobile dropping, and it is an absolute disaster. I covered this in a previous video of mine. I'll probably cover it more uh, once the dust kind of settles on this piece of shit. But, I mean, it's got like a 1.9 star rating on the Android store, as you can see here. It's just, go watch my other video on it if you want to deep dive into it. But it is truly awful, and it makes sense. What do I mean by that? Let me explain. They don't want to make a good game. That they do not. They want to make mediocre to bad games on various platforms. They want to make money from each of these games. They want none of the games to stand out and be good. And they want to keep releasing content that's merely meant to distract and get the consumer to consume without questioning it. It's it's legit like a cult. It reminds me of the Manson family or, or Heaven's Gate or Jonestown, where these cult leaders just keep giving these more... I don't know, ridiculous. It's always something new. It's always something new they're coming up with. So they keep giving these ridiculous ideas. And then they go from like a nerdy Star Wars cult to cutting their balls off and drinking Kool-Aid. You know what I mean? I, that's Call of Duty now, except that uh, it's not really working. As dumb as the Call of Duty player base truly is. And I'm sorry if you're a part of it, uh, but I, I'm just calling it like I see it. Overall, gotta be the lowest IQ across the board of any, any video game ever, even Fortnite. Makes Fortnite players look like Einstein and, and Neil deGrasse Tyson or something. But anyway, guys, I'm seeing historical lows across the board on Call of Duty, and we're gonna cover this in very, very intricate detail, and we're gonna cover why it's happening too. But if you are a Call of Duty addict, if you're a Call of Duty fan and you must play the game, you guys need to check out Gear Up Booster. They will make sure your connection and your experience is top tier because Call of Duty sure isn't. Third party apps for playing Call of Duty, pretty much a necessity at this point, guys. So, yeah. Guys, if you insist on playing Call of Duty or really any online multiplayer game, you have to contend with a lot of shady matchmaking going on in the background. Gear Up aims to fix that and bring you back to the days where ping is king. Just boot it up launch the game you want to launch and gear up does the rest it uh, locks you into certain regions gear up also has this bot lobby function which allows you to simulate how far you are away from certain servers so you can like, again fool the skill-based matchmaking but aside from that maybe you just want better connections check this out i have like 30 ping right now which is decent on modern warfare 3 it's near 30 ping but whenever I put on the gear up booster, I can get pings near the single digits. And when, I don't know, every little millisecond counts, so this does matter at the end of the day. If you're someone that typically gets put on servers with even higher ping, maybe even triple digit ping, gear up can help you as well and help alleviate these connection issues. So guys, get Gear Up Booster now. It works for a lot of different games. I also use it on Dead by Daylight, and you can check that out in the video description or the pinned comment. Click there, get Gear Up Booster, and have a much better time, a much more stable connection when playing online. All right, guys, welcome back to the video. We're just going to kind of rapid fire this because... I don't really know what else to do other than to rapid fire this information at you because if I just give you one piece of information, maybe you're not going to buy it. If I give you one snippet of numbers, and I'm going to cover even when the numbers are up and show you why they're up, 
because I'm not biased here. I, I, I'm i trying to find the actual hard data. And in my last video, which if you have not seen it, you need to watch it. We have done the math as best we can to figure out the Steam player base percentage. And we've done the math the best we can to figure out the overall player base percentage based on a leak that happened last year from a video game museum. Basically, Call of Duty, according to Steam charts, and what we know about the overall player base and the metrics that were given under oath by Mr. Bobby Kotick, the ginger gnome fucking creep job. Um, but what we figured out is that Call of Duty right now, on average, has around a million players worldwide on the console PC front. Mobile is boosting this exponentially right now, and Warzone Mobile is probably going to boost it even more, even though it seems like a lot of the hype really isn't there. It remains to be seen, but a lot of people overseas, not in America, love Call of Duty Mobile, again, because they probably can't afford consoles or whatever. So they're very smart businessmen. They truly are. They know how to squeeze every last bit of money out of this franchise. Numbers be damned. And what I mean by that is these numbers are absolutely horrendous guys let me just go over it let me, let me just go over it first and foremost i want to go over steam and people are going to say like it's just steam we figured out that steam represents about 12 to 15 percent of the overall player base for console and pc call of duty and this goes for warzone this goes for modern warfare 3 etc and november and december peak call of duty because a new 70 dollars title comes out and boost the player base and they usually do something with warzone as well around that time either some refresh or totally new thing comes out um as you can see since then since december the player base on steam has dropped 30 percent 30 percent and and falling i predicted that we would see the lowest overall average players that we've ever seen on this metric that we can track and it's coming to fruition Who's surprised at this? Seriously. Again, this represents about 12 to 15% of the total Call of Duty console PC player base. And this goes for Warzone, this goes for Modern Warfare 2, and this goes for Modern Warfare 3. The fact that a free-to-play game, a, a live service game, is bleeding this many players is alarming, to say the least. Especially considering a game like Rainbow Six Siege just hit like its all-time, I think, player count high. What, what, eight years after the fact? Nine years after the fact whatever this is not good G games will bleed players games will lose players over time especially games like single player games like elden ring or you know whatever live service games if they remain popular and if they're doing the right thing will typically just kind of up and down themselves i'm thinking right now of uh, dead by daylight how it's not really growing it's not really dying it's kind of just going up and down depending on the content coming out the events coming out what have you Call of Duty, for whatever reason, man, if they did not release a new game and like refresh Warzone every year to the dismay of a lot of people, would be. I, I truly think it would be a footnote, guys. If they did not have BR, the the mainline yearly release games would be in the gutter, especially after the debacle that was Modern Warfare 2. Anyway, let's get to the next piece of evidence here. I took this screenshot on St. Patrick's Day, so the day most people in America are free. I just hopped on Twitch. It was like, I think 2 p.m. or so, and you can see here that Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, like the actual $70 game, only has 84 K viewers. I brought this up in my community post here on YouTube. I had some people making excuses. People love to make excuses for the billion dollar company. And they were saying that because it was St. Patrick's Day, people are out drinking and celebrating and they're not playing or watching Call of Duty. Uh, for one, Call of Duty players don't leave their house. For two, if they do leave their house, they're probably on Twitch or Call of Duty Mobile because they're weird, you know, um, masochistic addicts. I don't know. Factually speaking, and we could track this with Steam Charts, the Call of Duty player base goes up every single weekend because, I mean, it's just not the weekday. They're not working, so they're going to be playing the game on the weekend. Typically for gamers, that's how it works. I, I don't make the rules. I'm just showing you. And the fact that it was that low is al alarming. Again, alarming. Now, I'm going to show you another side of the coin here. I went back a few days later, and I just wanted to see like what the game was doing uh, as far as viewers at another random time. But we have an explanation for this little bump in viewership. So if we go here, we see 
that it has 28.8k viewers. That's that's decent. That's much better than 8.4. But why is that? Well, if you actually look at who's streaming, Skump, Nate Shot, Aiden, and another rank play guy who might be a pro, might not, or whatever, are pretty much carrying the whole division here. No one else has over uh, even a thousand viewers. When the Call of Duty pro scene is more popular than the game itself, and I mean like one guy, like Skump himself, has more viewers on this shitty game than the shitty game has without Skump. <laughs> That's alarming. That's a problem. This is a billion dollar company, a billion dollar franchise here. Keep keep that in mind. But maybe you're still not convinced. Let's look at the Modern Warfare 3 subreddit. For one, the members are pretty low comparatively to every other Call of Duty subreddit. I think the only one lower than this one is Call of Duty Vanguard, if that says anything. Uh, on top of that, there's only 281 people even online talking about the game. So, yeah, uh, 281 out of 137k, not a great ratio, uh, but, but maybe you're still not convinced. Maybe you think I'm just cherry picking stats. So I'm going to pick my own videos here and we're going to compare it to someone else. It's like, seriously, no, I I'm not even kidding. All right. Here are eight recent videos I've done, and if you zoom in, if you're on like mobile or whatever, you can't see these, you can zoom in and see the views. 91k views, 59k views, 82k views, 74k views, 144k views, 90k views, 28k views, and 76k views. And for whatever reason, the 28k view one, uh, I think the algorithm bugged out for that one. That one performed really, really low comparatively. Don't really know why, other than I think YouTube just didn't push it out because I took a month vacation. But let's compare this to one of the most popular, I, I mean the most, one of the most popular Call of Duty personalities of all time. Everyone watching this video has probably heard of this guy. Let's see what someone who, who plays the game in a positive way is pulling viewership wise. Let's just take a look at this. This is swag. Now, the video we uploaded like an hour ago at the time of the screenshot, we're not even going to count that one. Let's look at the other views. 60k views, 97k views, 108k views, 73k views, 66k views, 94k views, 139k views. Why am I getting the same viewership as one of the most popular Call of Duty personalities of all time? And this isn't a knock on the guy, but the guy has 3 million subscribers. I have like 450k, not, not even that. Why am I getting the same viewership as a channel nearly 10 times my size? It, other than people are, are sick of this shit. Why do you think people watch me? You know what I mean? Like, it's not because I'm a Call of Duty YouTuber. It's because people feel the same way about the franchise. And the fact that my channel did better than it ever has done before last year is telling. I mean, Modern Warfare 2 was such a disappointment. I mean, it's, it's good for my channel in a weird way because it's so popular, yet so hated, you know? And it's it fell off so hard that, like, it's good for my channel, but at a certain point, I'm like, I, I, I have to call this out because this year, it, it's completely different, and we have people suffering. There are a lot of Call of Duty channels out there right now not doing well at all. I have never seen my colleagues pull the low amount of views they pulled until this year pertaining to Call of Duty. That is not a knock on them at all. No disrespect intended. We we essentially have a dance partner in Call of Duty, like us content creators that cover the game, right? If our dance partner has no legs, like the Lieutenant Dan or something from Forrest Gump, then we are going to have to pull that dead weight. And there's only so much we can do, like truthfully. And you might be saying like, this is just how it is on YouTube across the board. Like all games are like this. Bull fucking shit, man. You guys saw the Dead by Daylight player base on Steam earlier, and it's not even the COD's level as far as the, the player numbers go. Yet for whatever reason, Dead by Daylight does way better numbers on YouTube. The community seems way more invested. And if you don't believe me, I mean, look at Aaron's channel here, okay? Aaron has a, a few more subscribers than I do, 686K subscribers. I mean, he pulls upwards of 200,000 views per video. That's, and that's across the board, I've noticed, on Dead by Daylight content. A lot of Dead by Daylight YouTubers around my size will get exponentially more views. Why in the... Why, why? Why am I even bothering with this franchise anymore? I know you guys are here to hear me complain about it, but at a certain point, I'm complaining about a dead game. Because this year, historically, 
It is a dead game. I can't show you any more proof. Like, eventually, eventually, Call of Duty gets so down bad that it starts affecting the content creators. And I am so sick of the content creators, even to this day, still defending this blindly because they want to get invited out to some cringy event or something. Or they want to stay in Activision's good graces because maybe one day they'll get hired or maybe they're getting paid under the table even. We don't know. It would not surprise me a bit to find that out. Just recently, and I, I, I had to clap back at this because this made me so angry, all right? Everyone knows that the cheating problem in Call of Duty is horrendous right now. There are so many cheaters, and it seems like every time they do a ban wave, the cheat makers just get stronger and stronger. This is a billion dollar company here. A billion dollar company. Infinite resources. If they wanted to hire a team of like 100,000 people to monitor every single Call of Duty game, like, like live, and then dish out bans based on who they think's cheating or whatever, you know, and they have experts like <laughs> deducing these things. They could afford to do that and then send those 100,000 people in in into space on a diamond encrusted rocket on a trip to the moon and then, you know, get them back in like six months time and still be rich as all hell. Yeah, you know, money is no object for these people. They could do anything, and yet they can't get a proper, working, decent, even decent anti-cheat. I had this interaction with Modern Warzone. He was saying that y'all act like they aren't trying in response to this guy saying, uh, you know, worst decision, companies need to do good anti-cheat software. And this is truly the problem. This right here, and everyone's saying, like, Modern Warfare 3 is awesome. I love Modern Warfare 3. Well, you and the 10 other people can play Modern Warfare 3 multiplayer, but the rest of us see it for exactly what it is. It's a patch to Modern Warfare 2, which was a bad game. If you, if you, you know, put uh, lipstick on a pig, it's still a pig. All right? Modern Warfare 2 was a pig. <laughs> Modern Warfare 3 is a pig with lipstick. And no one cares. It's not fun, it's not interesting, it's not engaging. It does not matter what they throw at it, it's still that same awful game we had last year, hiding under bandages and, and plastic surgery. I'm not lying here, but I had to reply to Doug, and I'm sorry, but... And I said, these companies make billions of dollars per year, they have unlimited resources to stop this. Stop making excuses for a few nerds in their basement outsmarting billion dollar companies and start blaming said companies. If they cared enough, it's stop. This exact attitude is why the game is in the shape it's in. Stop being nice, it gets you nowhere, and you're nothing more than a dollar sign to them. They make so much money, and yet they just don't care. There's no other way to slice it at this point, man. There's no other way to slice it. And you might be saying the cheating industry is way more than just a couple of nerds in their basement, and that's fine. But there are countless, I mean countless reports I have seen from the community where like they go off in a game on uh, um, Warzone or something like that and then they get shadow banned because the entire enemy team spam reports them or something like that. I hear that so much. A couple of nerds have outsmarted the system. They, they want to get this guy shadow banned. They, they want to make this guy's experience a living hell because their, their report system has been like this for years. They do not care. They just simply do not care. And not only do they not care, but now we are starting to not care. Everything I have shown you in this video, it's not doctored, I'm not cherry picking it. I even showed you when the Twitch viewers were up. I would show you when the player counts up, but it never goes up, except for the new yearly release where people essentially throw 60, $70 down to gamble on the game being good and to tie them over for years to come like Black Ops 2 did back in 2012. It's never gonna happen. The next game, like guys, I am telling you, I've, I've tried to tell you for five years now, do not even buy the next Call of Duty game. Don't do it. Play Warzone if you want. Play Warzone Mobile, play COD Mobile. Stick to the free to play stuff if you want. Please listen to me and wait if you'd have listened to me back in 2019, not only would you have saved a, a bunch of time and frustration, you'd have saved, let's see, what's seven times five here? Um, $350, roughly $400 maybe, after taxes, after a special edition you may have bought. Even more, if you want to think about it, from, from skins. I mean, $400, it's pretty good, you know? <laughs> it's, it's not chump change. Um, guys, I'm out of time though. I hope you enjoyed.
I will catch you on the next one. Uh, Call of Duty is it's historically low right now. I, I, I don't really see how I'm going to cover this game for the next year. I don't. Something's got to happen, like, internally. Like that whole canceling of SM2 uh, that happened last year over the summer. Something's got to happen internally for me to continue to cover this game at, at any regular rate. And I'm sorry. I love making videos. I love making content. But, like, again, my dance partner has no legs. And I'm sick of carrying them around. I really am. Guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Have a good one. Peace. Advice. Oh!